Good evening. I'd like to call the June 13th work session of the Jackson County Board of Education uh, to order. All, all members are present that are going to be able to make it this evening. Mr. Hollett uh, was called back in for an emergency at work, and we have Ms. Wheeler has called in remotely. Uh, she had to be out of town at the last moment. So um, with, uh, with that being said, we will move right into our agenda. Our first item of business is going to be superintendent's comments. Uh, Dr. Brown, it's the first time I was able, able to say that in a meeting. Welcome. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Clarency. Uh, excited to be with all of you this evening. Uh, run through the superintendent's comments. Uh, the first thing board members you will see is a board resolution uh, for the local government investment pool. Um, that's just a switch over um, from Dr. Howard uh, to myself. Uh, the next as a couple of informational items, uh, September 8th uh, for our work session will be part of our budget and millage hearing. Uh, and the second uh, millage hearing will be on September the 12th at 6.30. Uh, and those coincide with our work session and board meeting. Um, and then we'll have a September 16th um, 7.30 a.m. meeting for the uh, millage rate and budget approval. Um, so any questions regarding that? No, sir. We will run right into uh, Dr. Hardegree. We'll take care of our human resources and student support services recommendations. Thank you, Dr. Hardegree. Uh, now, Ms. Todd has our ESS update. Hi, good evening. So, I have some special friends here tonight, um, representatives from ESS. And if you remember, board, we started a journey with them. And this school year, um, around January, I called all of these people in and said, we've got to do some work. And they're here tonight to share with you what has happened since that meeting and since my last update to you concerning our substitutes and our fill rates and uh, how we've employed people through ESS. And I'm going to let them introduce yourse themselves, but I invited them here to be able to share this information with you because they're the ones who put boots on the ground, <laughs> came in, and did what they said they were going to do. And we are seeing tremendous progress that we're very proud of. So I will let them introduce themselves and share this updated data with you. Hi, good evening. It's a pleasure to meet you, welcome. Um, my name is Casey Graber. I am the Regional Manager for Central and South Georgia. This is Ms. Kimberly Feltz. She is your local account manager and recruiter. I have Ms. Jamie. She is our Vice President of Operations and Doug, which is our Senior Vice President of Operations. So we got introduced as the dream team when we walked in because that is exactly what has happened. Um, I'm gonna share with you where our fill rates were overall for the year. I'm also going to share with you our pre-ESS reconstruction and our post-ESS reconstruction. So this year, you had 9,239 requests. We filled 6,422 of those with an overall fill rate of 70%. Now, in our ESS perfect world, that's not, what, that's not providing you the red carpet service. Our goal is always to have a 90%, 95% fill rate or higher. In the beginning of July 21 to December 21, we had a 65% fill rate. We filled 3,762 absences, and we left unfilled 2009. In January, Jamie, myself, and Kimberly came together with Cameron, and we strategized on a way to make quick improvements and give you that red carpet service. From January to May, we filled 2,660 positions. We did not fill 808, which was a large jump from where we had unfilled positions before. So that overall fill rate is a 77%. So for the year, 70% may not look as, as it should, but I have broken it down month by month 
so that you can see the gradual increase. In January, we had a 53% fill rate. And this is where we initially started. How many subs do we need to hire? What can we do to recruit more in your community and provide continuous coverage in the classroom? In February, we increased that by 11%. And we had an overall fill rate of 64%. By March, we were at a 76%. April, an 83%. And by May, we concluded the year with an 85% fill rate. Now, this is just some important information to kind of help you guys all know what positions we're filling the most for. So for your sick days, 5,591 absences, and those positions required substitutes. Without pay is almost 11% of your absences. Your perf professional leave is 500 January to May, we hired 79. Now, when the dream team <laughs> sat down with Cameron, <laughs> our goal was to hire 75 subs. Kimberly has built relationships with, and we've noticed that the subs that were on staff before have kind of started to fade away. Some of those may be because of incident reports. There's a reason that they're not helping us in the classrooms. Um, because we noticed that in April and May, some of the teachers like to take off time, so do subs. So we send out a survey to kind of gauge what their response is gonna be to coming back on board. If you'll get back up, please. Thank you. So your working subs are 103, and in order for us to provide that 90% fill rate or above, our goal is to hire 42 additional subs. That does not constitute the, including those non-working ones. So if we had the non-workings and we have the additional subs, we're gonna be in a good place. Permanent placements that ESS covered for this past school year was 40 paraprofessionals and 28 custodians. In our pipelines now to help us reach that 42 hiring goal, we have an in progress, a submitted, a job offered, and a pre-hired. So this just kind of gauges where those stages are. Right now, pre-hired is 11. So we're looking to have those join us pretty soon. They're in the process of doing orientation, um, their background check. Your job offered, we're waiting for them to accept the job offer. I always talk about the red carpet service because this is what you all deserve. <laughs> in order to help us gauge where we need improvement and to give ourselves a pat on the back where things are going really good, we send out principal surveys. We send these out mid-year and we send these out end of the year. Now, this addresses if your substitutes are arriving on time, are they dressed in a professional manner? We wanna know if you see your manager actively recruiting in the community. Um, we also wanna give you an opportunity to leave any type of personal feedback. So the principal surveys this year by the end of the year had an A plus 65% satisfied. We still have some improvement because we have 5% that was dissatisfied and some of those things were subs are late. These are things that, that allow us to better train them or put them back through retraining by incident support or incident day. We provide benefits medical, dental, vision, 401k. We also provide incentives that are on a corporate level and local incentives. Some of, some of our corporate incentives would be the most recent. If you worked the last five Fridays um, at the end of school, you're entered in a chance to win a $500 gift card. Some of our local incentives are when we have to bribe subs to go to work. It's a high impact day. It's a professional learning day. There's a lot of last minute absences. And so we kind of stirred the pot. Go, go back, please. Thank you. We also have a Kickstart program. So ESS is paying back any of the startup cost for a substitute to come on board. If they work 25 days and in a lot of time frame, we reimburse up to $125. So that can be the cost for your background check, a TB test, and it, sometimes it's a little difficult when you're looking for a job to fork money out. So we wanna give it back to them. We also have um, a referral program. This one's not listed on here, but some of the best recruiters are not always us, but members of the community, principals, teachers, uh, friends that are at the library. Anybody can earn $100, and there is no cap on that if their referral works a certain number of days. We also have the Perks at Work, um, which is just a marketplace discount program. So any way that we can give back to the subs, we do. Next slide, please. This is just a breakdown of our partnership overview, what some of our recruitment and summer strategies are. Um, this slide says 65 new hires. I apologize for that. It is 79. 
<laughs> we have increased the fill rate. We're going to continue to maintain an active sub pool. We also, this summer, want to um, support any of your sports. So anything that's going to happen in the gym, if they are playing basketball, if they are on the field with football, we want to be there. We want to have a recruiting table. We also want to put ESS blinders, blind banners up so that we know ESS is here to support Jackson County. We also are going to participate in all of your back to school functions. So open house, um, there is an entire support team behind Kimberly as you can see here and there's a much larger team that's on the central and south Georgia. So sometimes we utilize other recruiters and managers. Kimberly cannot go to every open house in one day, but we can borrow some of our other managers and knock it out in one day so that we provide that support. We did host a job fair on March 15th. Again, we had all hands on deck and we, continued, we want to continue to have local job fairs. Social media and job platform has been boosted. We know that you cannot recruit from your couch. However, it is a good tool because a lot of people that are looking for jobs simply use social media. We're gonna to continue to have local job fairs. We are participating with chamber job fairs and we have an up upcoming tri-county job fair. So Jackson County, Barrow County and Clark County, they're gonna to get together and our goal is to find additional certified teachers. So often a certified teacher will work in multi-districts and this gives us an opportunity to find them in your community. We have flyers that have been distributed in the community and in the district. Our goal is to paint Jackson County with ESS flyers. As I stated, we've got the partnership now with the County Chamber of Commerce. We're also going to participate in additional local events. We have local recruiting, and this is not limited to, but we are in front of grocery stores. We have talked to hospitals, libraries, the Department of Labor, colleges, because we work around your schedule. So that is sometimes one of our best ways to find subs. We are going to continue our weekly visitation to the schools. Um, sometimes things get swept under the rug about a no-call, no-show, or a frequent flyer that is last-minute cancellations. And when we're talking to the principals and the bookkeepers, this gives us an opportunity to get a more hands-on grasp of any problem areas that we have. We also get to chat with our subs and our permanent employees, address any type of questions, assist them with clocking in and clocking out. We're, we're going to continue to do your bi-weekly report cards or your bi-yearly report cards, so you'll get one mid-year, end of the year, and then we've also been providing bi-weekly check-ins with Cameron and some of the other board members. Next slide, please. This small picture list does not do justice as to what she has done in the community since January. We have done client engagement uh, brunches. We have presented substitute of the month, substitute of the year, employee of the month. These are just a small group of pictures that reflect the recruiting and the activity that Kimberly has provided in Jackson County. Next slide. Are we your dream team? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank you again for allowing us to serve Jackson County. If you guys have any questions, concerns, comments, we are here and we're happy to answer them. Great. Thanks for your update. Thank you. Dr. Briscoe with Public Relations. So I'm going to briefly talk about a PR audit that we did. Audit sounds super scary, but what it was, I asked principals and their admin teams to complete this long survey, obnoxiously long, and they answered questions about how they communicate with their parents, with their students, with their staff, with the community, anything and everything you could think of. And what we're going to do with that data is we are going to establish best practices, right? So sometimes it's a little bit jarring going from if you're a parent, right, and you have a child in elementary school and they go to middle school, the communication strategy is just, just different. And so just establishing best practices and making sure that we're doing everything right. Um, so what I'm going to do with that data is I'm going to make a cute, fun little book, and every principal is going to get that information because we've got a lot of new principals, so they probably need it. And then also what I'm going to do at the retreat is to kind of talk about some common things um, I saw across the board. But just did a little data dig, wanted to give you all an update. Do you all have any questions? 
Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Briscoe. Ms. Bryant with our financial update. Hi, good evening. I think I'm not as tall as everybody else. Um, so I'm going to start with our SPLOS report. And as you can see, our most recent deposit was $1,184,000. And that is a little less than the previous month. But it did push our average over the last 12 months to over a million dollars a month, which is fantastic. Um, <clears throat> and it is $155,000 more than May in the prior year. If we can move to the general fund balance. I'm gonna to go to the general fund financial report. So right now we are at 92% of the year has passed. And as you can see, we have collected 93% of the revenue that we budgeted for, and we have spent 93% of our expected expenditures, which is fantastic. I love it when it balances like that and you know you're right on track for your year. Next, we will look at the fund balance report. We ended May with a fund balance of $29,386,000. <clears> so we used $364,000 less of our fund balance than we used in the prior year. And this fund balance is $38 million, sorry, 3.8, let me get it correct, because that's a big difference, 3.8 million more than this time last year. The last report we're gonna look at is an update to the fiscal year 23 budget, the tentative budget that was shared with you at the board retreat in March. Um, just a couple of things that are different from the last time you saw this. Uh, we increased the beginning fund equity to $27 million. And as we look at how we're finishing the year, we feel like that's where we're gonna be ending. So that's a good number to start next year with. There also was an increase in our QBE revenue, just over $2 million from the um, governor approved allotment, the midterm adjustment. We added the 2.5 million um, expenditure that's gonna come from the general fund towards the new middle school that was approved at a prior um, board meeting. We also increased the non-teaching salary scale 3%, and that represents about $800,000 increase in expenditures. And we also increased expenditures by $655,000 um, to reflect the approved positions that were voted on in the May board meeting. Are there any questions about that or anything that I talked about? No? Okay, thank you so much. Ms. Wheeler is good with it. Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Patton, with a facilities and operations update. How are y'all? So I think first on the agenda we have the project report. And for Legacy Knoll, one of the big things we've got going on right now is the roundabout, trying to get that done while kids are out of, kids are out of school. Um, everything's on time for that, on schedule. We got uh, completion for the first week of July, hopefully before kids come from band. Um, storm pipe installation is going well, we're at about 25%. And just continually monitoring uh, material procurement out there. Um, everything's, you know, everybody's getting delays, but right now we're still on track. The high school dance space, you'll see some pictures of that later. Uh, turned out really nice. And then we've got doors on there. That was a reminder for the, uh, the wrestling area. We've got the last piece of it, the roll-up doors coming in later this month. The turf over at East High uh, is changing daily. Um, we got trucks running wide open over there right now. At West Elementary, that's one of the schools getting a media center uplift be kind of like this one when we get done. Uh, I know everybody's excited about that one, and certainly with that many kids packed in there right now, they're... Go ahead, Don. Real quick, when, when do you think the turf will go down at East High? So right now, and I didn't put the schedule in there, but we've got the end late July, 
of the turf install over there. Yeah, everything everything's on right now. It's really on schedule, and um, you know when you when you look at the forecast right now, it, it may not be good for farmers, but it's good for graders. So, um, you know, it's really everything's moving pretty good. Um, mobile classrooms were on track. Uh, West Middle is the last ones were when those are scheduled to come in. I think on the 23rd of this month. So. We'll get those set up and uh, and and hopefully we'll be ahead of the game from that standpoint. All the furniture for those mobiles is on site as well. And the parking lot seal and restripe, you'll see that going on the end of this month and into early July at those three schools. There's a few of our long list of summer projects that we've got going on. Uh, and Power's getting a little bit of a, a change over there I wouldn't call it a renovation just change to make it a little more functional over in their current front office um, give them a window and 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 make it look a little bit more professional over there um, along with we got the band room renovation going on we got floors are almost finished at east middle the um, all the carpeted rooms the carpet has been replaced in those now We'll have to touch up paint as we always do. Camera system upgrades at two schools, intercom replacements, and the robotics lab over at East High is getting, um, that's in the old welding facility, and we're, we're doing some things in there to make it a little bit more functional for, and then um, you can kind of see that one with the lines on it. That's current progress on storm installation. East High turf, and that one was last week. It'll look a lot different today. So, this kind of wraps that one up, unless anybody has any questions. Can you get some drone shots at East High when the turf goes yeah, down? Yeah, I'll, see, I'll okay. see if we can get some of those. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Josh. A lot going on this summer. Uh, a lot, period. I think, I don't have the agenda with me, but I think the insurance is next. Is that correct? And by the way, I will mention there's a financial report as well if you'd like to take a look at it on uh, two schools. Um, just monthly payments on those. On the insurance, we asked Chastain and Associates, uh, Dan Horn, to. Oh, thank you, David. Well, I'm right. We asked him to, uh, as he's done for many, many years, to look at our insurance, to price it with some other companies, and come back with the best proposal. We included with the uh, recommendation his letter, which outlines everything very well. And I think what you'll find is uh, pretty modest increases that are coming at a very volatile market right now in the midst of our growth, both with staff, operations budget, and with students. Uh, that bumps everything up. We've increased our facility uh, replacement costs some. We can't do that all at once because uh, Prices, as you know, are, are rising so fast. Uh, some of our fleet, particularly with new buses, and when we do that, the cost is a little bit higher than the older buses. So overall, you'll find the numbers are in the recommendation. The total difference is about 44000 versus last year. Of that 44000 a little over 50% represents what would happen anyway just due to growth, and the other represents a 5% increase by the insurers. So um, very good numbers on this. Uh, and I think you'll find uh, it's uh, keeping us in budget. And uh, any questions on the insurance at this point? Good. Thank you very much. And next, Mr. Farmer. Thank you, Dr. Brown Board. Appreciate the opportunity to come. And uh, we had approved RFP to send out for a uh, bus lease to purchase for 25 buses. That RFP has come in. We had three companies that participated in that, Rush International, Peach State Freightliner, and Yancey Bluebird. And after the committee uh, graded the uh, RFPs, uh, Rush International was the lowest bidder uh, in that. So uh, in saying that, we would like to recommend that we uh, move forward with the purchase through a bus lease program, um, 25, 20 regular buses, and five special ed buses. Is there any questions? 
Any questions, Ms. Wheeler? Any questions, Ms. Wheeler? No. Okay. Thank you, board. Thank you, Dr. Brown. One quick response on the insurance is we also recommended uh, moving our coverage for cyber uh, problems from 250 to a million dollars, and that's uh, in these days kind of a no-brainer. So it's 4,700 and some odd dollars left. Uh, 47.71. And now back to me. So we um, we received the uh, we had an RFP out for uh, furniture for Legacy Knoll, and those all all those current projects and workload uh, references, fee and cost estimates, and then a value added portion in that. Um, after going through the grading process, we we ended up on new idea. Um, at this time, we didn't feel like there was a there was a need for any further um, evaluations or or interviews, and would like to recommend them for for the furniture provider on on this project. Have they supplied been your supplier before, or is this the first time? This will be the first time. Yes, sir. Okay. How how much do you expect in the Furnishings. So their estimate came in at 1.2. That's everything. Um, that's everything. That's for the, you know, and they take a lot into that, the size of the building, the FTE, the, um, all those things. So, um, you know, that's, of course, at this time, that's an estimated. Um, they did a really good job of theirs as far as knowing what we wanted. And um, so I, I think we'll be, we'll be pretty good on that. A lot of that's all of them are based really on state pricing so no no problem getting it in time to open the school with some of your no that's why we wanted to get issues. it okay get it done early so all right thank you and which one was the next one? Oh, solid waste we'd like to recommend going with our our current provider is a uh, waste management and they've been with us for about four years now so um, given the given the market and where we are we didn't feel that this year was a time to go out with that one and and they've been really satisfactory working with us as well so we'd like to continue with them next year And on lawn maintenance. No questions on the oh. trash or solid waste, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get used to that one too. So the lawn maintenance contract, um, that's another one we would like to recommend moving forward with the same company again this year, which is Yellowstone. Um, they came on board last July. Um, they've done a really good job for us and we, see that only improving this year so we'd like to continue with them and that would be at the same price as last year as well can you refresh me on what what it is they they maintain not the sports fields just the the areas around the school buildings is that right that's right so um at the high schools they don't do the sports fields the others they they do take care of the other ones. If it's a pl like a play field at West Elementary, they would mow that kind of. They thing? would. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other? Did, did you say there's not an increase the same parts that we paid them when she came yeah. through? That's correct. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. That's pretty right. significant. Yeah. It it is. Yeah. That's all. Those are pretty volatile markets right now to be getting pricing from. All right, Any I guess, questions? I guess that's it. All right. Thank you, Josh. All right, that, that concludes our business this evening for the work session. So we will stand adjourned.
All right, good evening. We return real fast. I'd like to call the uh, June 13th, 2022 meeting of the Jackson County Board of Education to order. We have, um, as I said just a few minutes ago, um, all members are present with the exception of Mr. Hollett. He was called in uh, to work. Um, so our first item on the agenda tonight is approval of the minutes. So I have uh, minutes. All, all members had an opportunity to review. I'll make sure I have these in order here. Um, so we have uh, minutes from the May 5th, 2022 meeting of the Board of Education. For us, are there any additions or corrections? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? So I have a motion. I have a motion and a second. All in favor of approving the minutes from May the 5th? Uh, that's unanimous. Our next meeting minutes are from the May 9th, 2022 meeting in the Jackson County Board of Education. All members had an opportunity to to review, is there any additions or corrections? Here, none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the May 9th meeting. So moved. So I have a motion, to have a second? I second. So I have a motion and a second. All in favor of the meeting, uh, 2022, all members had an opportunity to review. Is there any additions or corrections to the minutes from our May 25th meeting at East Jackson High School? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes from May the 25th. So I have a motion, do I have a second? So I have a motion and a second. All in favor of approval of the minutes from May the 25th? Aye. Uh, that's unanimous, all right. Thank you for that. I did that as fast as I could, Dr. Brown. Um, so our next item is approval of the agenda. I know we generally don't like to have work sessions the same night right up bumping against our meeting. So um, I know we took special time in, in reviewing the agenda, so I would like to approve the agenda. Is there any, any members uh, have any items uh, they would like to change um, or pulled off for further discussion before we approve the overall agenda? Hearing, hearing none, I'll go ahead and entertain a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. I so, so I have a motion, do I have a second? second. So I have a motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. All right, that's unanimous, so we have approval of the agenda. All right, Dr. Brown, we will roll into superintendent's comments. Thank you, Mr. Clarcy. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you to all of you for the warm welcome. Uh, as this is my first board meeting, I know it doesn't look like it. Uh, it looks like I've been doing it for a long time. Um, <laughs> so usually we start with the Pledge of Allegiance, and, and with it being the summer, we do not have a student present uh, to lead us in the agenda or lead us in the pledge, so I found the, the person that's closest to the age of a student, so Dr. Briscoe, um, if you come up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. You could sing the Star Spangled Banner. I was going to do that. <laughs> All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dr. Briscoe. I have a few introductions to make uh, today. Board members, we have some new um, leaders in the room with us today who are in new spots. Uh, first off, I want to introduce Ms. Dr. Katie Warwick. Uh, she will be the new principal at Maysville Elementary next year. Dr. Matt Stratemeyer will be the new principal at East Jackson High School next year. <laughs> Ms. Lori King will be the new principal at West Jackson Elementary School next year. <laughs> Dr. Amity Hardigree will be our new assistant superintendent for student services and human resources. <laughs> Dr. Danny Waxter will be our new director of student services. Dr. Michelle Archibald will be our new Director of Elementary Education. <laughs> Board members, all of these leaders will get to know me. Uh, over the next couple of days, we're having our district leadership retreat on Wednesday and Thursday. Excited about having the opportunity to 
meet with them. Uh, we have 42 days until pre-planning. Uh, not that anybody's counting. Um, and Josh, it feels like it got a little bit hotter in here. Uh, and we are 46 days away from the day students return. Uh, so lots of work that has to happen between now and then. Um, I do have uh, a couple of things I'd like to say. Um, this is Ms. Anglin's last board meeting. Uh, she's let us know that she is going to resign her spot. Um, so I want to say a, a few words about her. Nobody has been dedicated to our community like Carol Anglin. Uh, she retired from teaching after 31 years of service uh, and then served for eight additional years at 49% as an EIP teacher. Uh, she's worked through with many of our most vulnerable children, and her passion has always shown through. Today, she still reads to children at North Jackson Elementary School, uh, where she attended elementary school as a child. She's been an integral part of opening the Empower College and Career Center and overall giving back to her home and her community. At the end of the day, she will always be an advocate for students and teachers and will miss her tremendously on this board. So, Ms. Anglin, thank you for your service. Also, uh, this is Mr. Gilbert's last board meeting. Uh, Mr. Gilbert joined the Jackson County School System as Assistant Superintendent for Operations in January of 2018. After serving 15 years in the same capacity within the Clark County School District in Athens, Georgia, he's overseen our facilities, our school food nutrition, and transportation departments. He served as a leader in opening the, Jackson, the new Jackson County High School and the new Empower College and Career Center. We appreciate his leadership and we thank him for his commitment to our community. And that concludes my report. Thank you. All right, Dr. Brown, uh, thank you for that. Um, we'll just continue moving right along uh, with our agenda. So our, our, our next item is our public comment. Uh, did we have anyone sign up uh, for public comment? We did not. So here none, is, anyone, is there anyone here wishing to address the board and, and uh, weigh in in public comment period? Here none, we will, we will close our public comment and we will move to our consent agenda items. You see the uh, uh, agenda before you, we've approved it. I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items. So I have a motion to approve, do I have a second? So I have a motion and a second, all in favor of approving the consent agenda items as submitted? Aye. Be aye, that'd be unanimous. So our next item is executive session. We do have a need for executive session for the purpose of uh, discussing personnel. So we will, do I, I, I need a motion. I just forgot, I'm sorry. Uh, can I get a motion to go into executive session? Th th thank you for that. Uh, Rob, do I get a second? Second. I have a second for Ms. Anglin, so all in favor. That's unanimous, we'll go to executive session.
All right, we have quietly returned from our executive session. Do I have a motion to come out of executive session? Uh, so moved. All right, so I have a motion. Do I have a second? So I have a motion and a second. All in favor, return from executive All right. session. All right. So our last item of business is uh, to approve the uh, personnel list or the personnel action that we discussed in executive session. Do I have a motion to, uh, to approve uh, the personnel list that was presented in executive session? All right, so I have, a, I have a motion to approve Dr. Brown's recommendations of personnel. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Uh, that, that is unanimous. That does conclude our meeting for this evening. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone's attendance, and we took notes on who left early. Um, they, they, they will do the pledge and the Star Spangled Banner at the next meeting. All right. Give permission. <laughs> oh, come on. All right. Thank you.